is electric. Good morning everyone and welcome back for another energy related video. It's Saturday the 1st of June. Uh, yeah, summer's arrived. Uh, yeah, summer hasn't arrived. Um, it's not actually that bright. Um, the brightness that you're seeing here is from the lights for the camera. Um, it's actually grey outside, it's windy, it's raining, it's cold. It's more like autumn. So yeah, days like this makes you think I need more solar power. I need more solar panels. So thank goodness I've put six more in the garden and I need to get those connected. Yep, six solar panels, six 410 watt Trina solar panels mounted on garden sleepers ready to go so over the last couple of weeks i've been discussing with uh, christian my installer at power different what we're going to do and how we're going to get them connected and we've come up with basically there are three options three options for installing them so let me talk you through those options and which one i'm going to be going for and why that's now got complicated option one add a new inverter I've got three already, I've got three solar inverters, just add another one. Six panels, connect them together, one array, one inverter, one MPPT, jobs are good and nice and easy. But what we're talking is an AC connected grid tied solar inverter and this is where it gets a little bit complicated because that solar power that is coming to me comes to the house and if I don't use it, it gets exported because it's connected to the grid. So it needs approval from the grid that I can export those limits. Instead of the limit of the three that I have, I need to increase it to cater for the fourth. So, yep, if I add another one, another application to the DNO, and fingers crossed, they approve an extra export limit. If not, it gets complicated and I have to install a G100 device to limit my export so that I keep within the limits that they set. So some bureaucracy, some admin, some hassle, you know, it's funny, isn't it? The DNO, you know, you hear those letters and you think, oh, this is awful, absolutely awful. But I'm very lucky here in Norfolk because our DNO is UK Power Networks. And apparently they're much nicer and much easier going and don't seem to have the same restrictions that other DNOs seem to impose immediately. So instead of just going, no, 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 they seem to say yes quite a lot. I've already got 8.3 kilowatts of export limit and they didn't say that's it. They didn't say that's as far as you can go. So there should be a little bit more that I can do. So adding an extra inverter, I'm hoping won't be a problem. I know other people that have got m way more solar installed than I've got and uh, have reached those limits, but they're reaching limits on 13, 14 kilowatts. So that's option one, the easy, simple route. And that inverter will cost around 300 pounds. So not a problem at all. I'd probably go for a 2.5 kilowatt inverter. So whereas my solar edge inverter is just a two kilowatt inverter with 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, that slightly annoys me. I'm missing out on those extra 400 watts. So I would want to install a 2.5 kilowatt inverter and get it all because the panels are south facing ish. They are going to max out. I am going to want to see 2.4 kilowatts of energy coming through. So that's option one. Option two is to go with DC connected solar panels. So because I've got the Victron inverter, the Victron Multi Plus 5000, part of the reason for going that for that is because I can connect AC solar to it, as I have, or I can connect DC solar to it. So it's a combination of the two. It's not just one or the other. So I can basically buy an MPPT, so a part of what would normally be in a solar inverter, which connects the solar panels and optimizes the DC power that comes through, that then connects to my GX device, the communication device for my Victron inverter. The two communicate between each other and uh, that's how it works with my Victron inverter and the power comes through from the DC side and goes to the Victron inverter and the DC side for my batteries, my Pylon Tech batteries. So that's good from conversion losses. If I'm charging my battery from solar, I won't get any conversion losses of DC from solar to AC and then from AC back to DC to go into the battery. There's quite a lot of losses involved in doing that. But I don't charge my battery from solar anymore. I export all my solar energy. So actually the solar energy would be coming in from DC into the Victron inverter, getting inverted to AC and being consumed by the house or going out to the grid exporting. 
So actually I'm not a lot better off on the DC connected solar when I'm not self-consuming all my solar when I'm actually exporting it. But it's an option. It's a good option if I want to avoid the export limit because the Victron inverter can only invert 5000 VA, 5000 volt amps. It's a 5 kilowatt inverter. So that capability is what it can invert from the battery. So if I put it on full power and export everything I can out of the batteries into the grid, it will export at about 4.5, 4.6 kilowatts. So it doesn't matter how much solar I've got added on there as well and how much solar is coming through. The inverter can only invert that amount. So it can't invert any more. So actually what would it do? If I had solar and I was exporting um, the solar at maximum and also exporting from the battery, what would it actually do? Well, I guess what it would do is export the maximum it can, the 5000 VA, so it pull less from the batteries. Um, I'd only be taking 2.6 kilowatts from the battery, 2.4 kilowatts coming from solar. That would give me the maximum going out. Um, so I'd just take less from the battery. So option three, what is option three? Well. I've got a 2.5 kilowatt Solus inverter already. That's got two MPPTs. One has the uh, east facing gable panels on it. The other MPPT has the three garage panels, which are south facing. What I could do is upgrade that inverter, take out the 2.5, put a 3.6 kilowatt inverter in. That would only give me an increase of one 1.1 kilowatts on my export limit. And then I could put the garden panels in the MPPT instead of the garage panels and move the garage panels, the three solar panels, onto a Victron MPPT. So 350 watt solar panels, 150 volts, that's perfect and the amps are fine as well. So a 150-35 would be absolutely fine from the Victron MPPT and I would get them connected and I would get the interesting connection of using Victron as well. So the downside is it's two inverters. I've got to upgrade one inverter and I've got one spare and I've got to buy another MPPT as well. So installation cost goes up, the interest factor goes up and the DNO export limit issues come down slightly. So those are my three issues. AC connected inverter, just add another one. DC connected MPPT, compromise with a mixture of serial and parallel. Um, connecting of the solar panels, or three, going with an upgrade of one of the inverters that I've got and then adding my three garage panels into the back of the Victron inverter with a separate DC MPPT. Hopefully I've explained that okay. Those are my three options. The favoured option, what we're going to go with, Add another inverter. It's the simple and easy solution. It's the cheapest solution. That's what I'm trying to do with these solar panels. I want to have an example of a cheaper, better way of doing it. That um, oh, better? Is it better? I'm not sure. I've installed several uh, arrays on my roof and they've been quite expensive sometimes because of the installation costs of putting scaffolding up and those sort of things. So to install it in the garden and keep that installation cost low and to install it with a smaller inverter and cheaper panels, the panels are only 50 quid a piece. So um, I'm not spending a lot here to do this. I want to see how cheap we can do this installation. So it makes sense to go with just a separate inverter. But as I said, that's preempting things because I haven't actually decided, we haven't actually decided that that's exactly what we're doing. Because things got complicated just the other week. Um, I had a contact from Solace themselves saying they'd seen some of my videos, they like what I'm doing, and they like the fact that I like their inverters. Would we, would we like a collaboration? Can they help with one of my projects? Basically they want to send me some inverters or an inverter and um, be a part of it and for me to mention Solace a few more times. <laughs> Now that actually didn't take a lot of thinking about at all, to be honest, because I was already thinking about installing a Solus inverter. So why wouldn't I say, yes, please, you can send me one for free and I'll install it and mention you a few times. It makes sense, doesn't it? It makes sense to do it. It's not as if I'm changing. Oh, I was going to say I recommend doing this and this is what I want to do. But ah, oh, free inverter, I'll, I'll have that and say how wonderful that is. No, that's not... That's not what's happening here at all, because I was already doing it. I already like Solus inverters. I already told you the low light performance on them is excellent. I've never had a hardware issue with Solus inverters either, and I've had good experience of software support from Solus. 
even, even though it's all the way from China sometimes, um, they have been really helpful and got me going with any issues that I've had on the monitoring side. So I, I, I like Solis inverters. They're reasonably priced, they're high performance, they're very reliable. The software's, the software's, software's okay. Um, there's a few, there is with everything, isn't there? There's a few niggles where you'd think, if only it could be a little bit better. But Solis do update the app as well. It's, it's a good thing. So I've got no hesitations about um, being a part of a promotion on involving Solace in this way. But the problem that I've got is Solace are a big company. And rather than just saying, you know, it's a couple of hundred pounds for an inverter retail, so their manufacturing cost of one of those inverters must be peanuts. So rather than just saying, here, have a, have a bunch of inverters and install which ones you like and try them, they're not quite saying that, which you'd sort of expect because it's only a few hundred pounds. Why go to more effort? But now I'm having discussions with um, marketing managers, head of EU, the UK marketing people, some technical specialists want to talk to Christian to make sure that we're installing the right one. It's all due diligence. It's all what you would do with a bigger company, getting it right. But they're spending way more money on their personal time being involved with this rather than making quick decisions. So it's slowing me down. It's making it harder to get a decision. Um, and I've noticed already it's, it's getting difficult to get an actual decision. I'm talking to someone called Bin Bin and um, we've basically got an informal agreement about what I'm going to provide and what they're going to provide. We've basically agreed what the inverter will be. And that's taken a couple of weeks to get to that point. Um, but she's involved um, somebody that's on the EU side of Solace Marketing. So again, another senior person, um, they need to approve it because it's going to come from their parts bin and they've got to approve what they're doing on a marketing point of view. But also then they need to check that it's the right thing. They're not obviously going to want to send something that's inappropriate and doesn't look right in the video. So due diligence and doing a professional job, they want to check that it's the right thing. So they want to talk to Christian, the installer, and uh, make sure that uh, they're all aligned, we're all aligned, that it's the right thing, it's a good thing, and then they know what to send. But all of that takes time, that takes effort, and contacting Christian um, is quite hard. Um, he doesn't do residential solar anymore, so he's doing this as a favour to me, as a friend. Because he's too busy installing commercial solar projects like the King Solar at Sandringham. That's one of the projects he's got on the go at the moment. So getting hold of him and getting him to speak to Solace isn't the easiest thing in the world. So that very simple solution of 2.5 kilowatts, single MPPT, that's the S6 Mini 2.5 kilowatt inverter. It's an easy decision, it's an easy solution, but it's, it's not getting approved in the loop of people. So we're still trying to get um, one of the technical people at Solace to have a confirming conversation with Christian or someone at Power Different to say it's the right thing. So I've sent across the specs of the solar panels, I've sent across the config of my system so they can see what's going on, I've sent descriptions about what the options are and what we're thinking about and why the separate inverter is the right way to go. But it's just taking extra time to get through so we know what we're doing. It really does make me think, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through more effort having to deliver extra content for Solace as compensation for them sending an inverter, which to them is worth, what, 50 quid? If that, and to me, is worth a couple of hundred pounds, is it really worth my effort? I might as well just press click, 300 pounds, order it, and let's get on with it. But I like the idea of having a collaboration with Solace because I like their inverters. And if you go back to my video about what would I do if I started again, one of the things I would do is get rid of the solar edge inverter I have and get a new combined Solace solution because I like it and it would be more efficient. I'd get more power. I quite like that idea. So if I'm going to do anything with my existing configuration in the future and resolve some of those issues, it would be nice to have a partner on board to do that. They've already said, you know, is there anything we can do about the hybrid inverters? We'd like you to have some of the latest hybrid inverter tech. So even on the battery side, um, there might be potential to do things in the future and try different things. So yeah, I, I like Solace and I like the idea of having a collaboration that grows. So if this is the starting point, if this is what we do to get that collaboration working, then it will be worth it. Otherwise, 
yeah, I'm just going through a few loops here and more communication and more admin for something that's quite simple. So yeah, I hope it's gonna be worth it, but I want to share that with you. I want to share the process with you and what's going on. Anyway, anyway, there you go. That's what we're planning on doing. Three options. AC connected is how we're going. Extra inverter, keep it simple and uh, wait and see if we have any issues. <laughs> So we'll get that application to the DNO. If we have any issues, then we've got two other options to consider. One, the upgrade, and two, just the DC connected solar. So I'm finding this fascinating. It is great to look at all of the options, but I can't wait to get the solar. Power, it's great having the solar panels on the lawn. They look the business, they look like they're delivering power, but of course they're not because they're not connected to anything. So yeah, let's get them connected. Let's get these decisions made and off we go. So it's a separate inverter, the Solus S6 2.5 kilowatt mini inverter. That's what we're going with. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would be doing. Which option do you think is the right one? Have I missed an option? Is there something I haven't thought of? Let me know in the comments. This stuff's great, isn't it? Solar energy, batteries, electric cars, electric heating. It is fantastic. Some people are saying, oh, but it costs a lot of money to install. Well, you know, if they can't see that having no energy bills, I don't pay to run my car on fuel. You know, I don't pay for my heating fuel. I don't pay for the house electricity. There's no gas, there's no petrol, there's no diesel, there's, diesel, there's no oil. It doesn't cost me anything. If they can't see how good that is and how good it makes you feel and comfortable and secure, uh, it makes you feel, then it's really, really sad. And instead they want to moan about energy companies and high prices and they can't afford this and they can't afford that. I guess you can only uh, lead a horse to water, can't you? It's not that expensive. It is reasonably easy to do. It does save you money. Go on, go and have a look. Take care. Bye for now.